Hi everybody, this is Peter. Um, today I'm going to be looking at uh, Status Pro Hockey again. Uh, this is uh, the version, it's been updated somewhat since uh, the last time I did this video, which was about a year ago. Um, uh, some of the procedures have changed a little bit and some of the, uh, the fast action cards here have been changed a bit. So, um, And also wanted to showcase the, some of the game materials. Um, so, uh, um, it's available, um, sorry, uh, the game was originally available, I think, starting in the 70s, uh, I guess part of the Avalon Hill line, Status Pro uh, Sports Games, uh, but uh, um, it's now being um, um, published by uh, Brian, Brian Yonashonis, hopefully, hopefully I got that name right. Yes, uh, so it's, uh, this is a, um, a full play hockey game. The uh, game is going to take you about 45 minutes to an hour to play. And, um, and it's um, totally, uh, well, almost totally driven by uh, fast action cards here. And uh, this is, uh, comes with uh, 105 action cards. And uh, when you go through that deck, that constitutes a period. So each card re represents, I think, about 12 seconds of, of uh, action. So, um, and then uh, I, I, I use a couple of D10s here because sometimes it asks for a random number where, so rather than flipping another card, um, I just uh, roll the two D10s to get a random number instead. Um, game comes uh, printed or in a PDF format. Um, the, uh, if you're ordering PDFs, uh, there's, uh, there's 24 player cards per page. Um, so you can, um, you can uh, figure out how many uh, pages that'll take. Um, depending on uh, what, uh, what season that you buy. Uh, this, uh, I think every NHL season, starting from 1917, is available. And plus there are some um, other uh, leagues like WHA and some uh, minor leagues and other, um, other leagues. And Brian even does um, uh, season creation, uh, uh, season creations on request. Um, so, um, to, depending on, I guess, uh, the stats available and, su and such. Um, so, I guess, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show you what uh, that comes with. Uh, you get, uh, you get uh, a rule book here, which is like uh, nine pages, and it's uh, very well organized, big headings. And, let's get that over there. You get uh, some charts that you'll be uh, using to play the game, some penalty charts. And um, so a four checking chart and a face off chart. And the face off chart I'll just put here because I'm going to be using that during the game. And it also comes with um, also comes with uh, like a sheet with uh, uh, power play and penalty kill markers for the different positions. So if you want to mark those on uh, mark the players who are on your penalty power play and penalty kill on the on your uh, sheets here, uh, you can do that easily. Um, and then if you, uh, for the rent, for the line changes, it has a sheet of uh, tells you exactly when to change lines. If you don't want to, if you want to use like a one minute line change or a four minute line change. And here's a score sheet that it comes with. And then uh, as you can see, uh, it comes with this nice um, game board, which uh, I guess printed on four eight and a half by eleven sheets, uh, with a nice uh, rink graphic here and uh, little squares to lay out your players. You know, left wing, center, right wing, left defense, right defense, goalie, and then the, the team card you can put up here, and a couple of spots here for the penalty box. Uh, players are in the penalty box, and then um, these uh, these other sheets here uh, are just uh, you can lay out the the other lines. So you know, um, forward lines two, three, and four, and defensive lines two and three, and then you can back up goalies and extra players here. So. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, play this as you like uh, in terms of uh, switching lines and stuff like that. You can you know swap out these lines, remove these cards, and take the line two cards and put them on. Or if you want, you could just uh, use a, a token to indicate which line is on the ice and just keep the, the players laid out like this. Uh, personally, I prefer the uh, grid method um, like like this, or I I use these uh, plastic um, plastic uh, pocket uh, sleeves. 
um, sheets to uh, do that. But uh, for the purposes of this video, I wanted to show the uh, the game board here. Um, you can also use a little marker to show which line is on the ice here. Offensive line one, two, three, four. Defensive line one, two, and three. And uh, the number of four checkers. Um, I always use two four checkers unless uh, a team is killing a penalty, in which case you only, only use one four checker. So I, I don't usually uh, have to use that to remind myself, but that's there for you to use. So, um, so before I get started on some sample gameplay, I'm just going to show you a, a couple of uh, the player cards here. Okay, so we got, uh, we got Chico Mackey and Bill White here from the 7071 uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Here's their position number. And then some of their stats for the season, their height and weight and age and stuff like that. And each player has a face-off rating. So this is a, a, the, rate, the number in front of the brackets is their rating. And uh, the number inside the brackets is a usage. Uh, sometimes the, the facts refer to a player with the highest usage gets the puck. So that's, that's important. Um, and, uh, and then there's an injury rating here, which could come up. And so you have uh, three different shot types in the game, uh, shot on goal A, B, and C. A is like a, a close range shot. B is sort of a mid range and C is like a, um, a shot from, uh, further out. So the less chances of it. So th these numbers are, um, a one on a one to a hundred chance. So Chico Mackey, for instance, his shot on goal A chance is 1 to 25. So if you draw a fact and the, the number is within 25, then that means the shot is uh, on target. Then you would check the goalie card to see if, uh, and draw an, another fact and get another number and check against the goalie card. Uh, the 27 is uh, the number to use on the power play for a shot on goal A. Or there's another, that's one way to do it. There's another way to do it, which I'll explain later. And this uh, 36 is the uh, shootout uh, chance rating. And then, uh, then B and C is here. And they have assist rating, penalty, defense, and intimidation ratings. The, the S is um, another shootout rating. It's just a, in terms of, um, like, if you wanted to, you know, say, pick between these two guys for the shootout, you would go with a higher rated, higher number. So you would go with Chigo Mackey versus Bill White for, on a shootout. So all, all the players have that. Uh, the V is a value. Um, that's another thing that comes into play sometimes with the facts. And it might say the, play, um, the player with the highest value gets the puck. And I'll just quickly show you a uh, goalie card. So this is uh, uh, Tony Esposito. Um, his, uh, and it, it's nice that they have a home and away uh, rain, uh, save ranges for the goalies, which is a neat, uh, a neat feature. Um, and this... Uh, these numbers and brackets are to do with this with the shootouts as well. Um, the goalie has a clutch rating, which is separate from the team team clutch rating. Um, and then it has the stats. So, so if you roll uh, on a goalie card and or sorry, if you roll on a shot and the shot's within range on the shooter's card, you would come here and roll. And for instance, uh, roll of um, a fact of outside from one to twenty two or eighty six to one hundred outside the goalie's range would be a goal. Uh, otherwise. This is the uh, save range that's on the card. Okay, so we'll just uh, get going with some uh, play here. Um, uh, while I remember, uh, Brian also uh, makes uh, custom game boards, if you like. Uh, I forget what the cost is. It's probably not very much. Where he puts the uh, the team logo at center ice, and then I think he puts the... Uh, you say, yeah, the team on the team colors and the colors and the logos are on the, the first line on the main main part of the board here. So if you know if you want to put have your favorite team as the that or if you want to have a range of teams, if you want to have a whole bunch, you can do that too. Okay, so um yeah, so we have the, the pile of uh, facts here. I'm gonna just gonna zoom in. So I have the pile of facts here, and then you just just flip a fact and you get going. So uh, with the face-offs, um, there's uh, two ways to do it. You can uh, you can look at um, uh, 
I, I prefer the advanced way where you look at the, uh, the difference in the face-off ratings. So Jean Rattel has a, has a plus two, Pitt Martin has a plus one, so there's an advantage of plus one. And then you would look at the advanced face-off chart, so plus one, the favorite, would win the face-off on a random number of one to 55. And uh, the underdog, uh, would, otherwise the underdog would win the face-off. Um, and uh, yeah, so the random number is 47, so that means uh, Mattel wins the face-off. And then you look at the, uh, the face-off section of the FAC, and uh, it says, um, you could ignore the, the first part, the home team part. That's if you're just using the basic uh, uh, face-off procedures. And then you would just look at to see who gets the puck. Highest face-off usage controls the left defense. And so I have a, a little, little puck here that I uh, put to indicate who has the puck. Uh, yeah, I should explain the, the, uh, the facts a bit more. Um, yeah, so basically you're going to be reading from the action section on the, on most of the facts yeah it tells you uh, what happens with the puck uh, who it go, who the passes go to before it gets to a sh shooter uh, so you can keep track of uh, who's going to get the assist of a goal was scored uh, you get a random number which is a one to 100 number rebound section so you use that when a shot is uh when a sh when the shooter's card is off target face off and then there's a six man if that uh, comes up Okay, so um, for the line changes, um, I, I've been experimenting with a few different things. And I've just got a uh, thing here for um, and numbers of 1 to 10, so I just sort of uh, put a pawn here each time I flip a fac. And uh, once you get to 10, then you change lines, and 10 represents two minutes of action. Okay, so uh, Brad Park, the Rangers, has the puck. And uh, right away we have one of these special facts here. Um, where uh, there's an action, you're supposed to look at the action um, thing in red and also at the clutch clutch uh, indications at the bottom here. It says change lines at puck stoppage, but since the game has just started, I'm not going to bother doing that, so I'm just going to ignore that for, the, for, for this case. Uh, clutch, it says team clutch rating next two shots. So uh, since New York has the puck, it's, we're going to apply uh, New York's uh, clutch, team clutch rating. The team clutch rating is found here. Uh, where is it here? Yeah, here it is at the bottom, plus one. So uh, you would just apply that to the uh, shot rating. So if a New York player gets a shot, you would add one to his shooting chance. And if uh, and if Chicago is taking a shot, you subtract one. So what I did is I just um, I not sure if you can see that up there. Yeah, I have a thing up here just above the game board where I keep track of uh, uh, if a team clutch uh, situation is in effect and, um, and how many shots it takes effect for. So it's two shots, so I have a little uh, die with the number two up there. Um, another way you could do it is you could just put uh, the fact sort of to the outside here and just sort of the, to remind you that that's in effect. Okay, so it's had two facts going here. So see Brad Park still has the puck. It says pass the left defense and left wing, and it says assist bonus. It says assist bonus, A, B, in brackets. Pass to right wing for a shot on goal, A. Okay, so, um, so the pass went to the left wing, Vic Hadfield, and I just put a little pawn on Hadfield's thing to remind me to add his assist rating to this shot. And the shot uh, goes to the right wing for a shot on goal, A. So in this game, um, when you're presented with a shot on goal A, you have to shoot. Uh, if you get a shot on goal B or C opportunity, then uh, you have the choice of shooting or uh, just continuing uh, play with uh, continuing play with the next fact. You don't have to shoot with the B and C because there's a much less chance of uh, uh, scoring or getting it on target. Okay, so. Gilbert shot on, shot on goal A rating is 1 to 31. Uh, Hadfield's assist rating is 3, so that's 34. And then uh, you subtract the defense, uh, you add the, the defense rating of the uh, the defender. So in the right wing's case, it's the left defense. And the left defense is Pat Stapleton. His defense rating is minus 7. So that's 31 plus 3, 34 minus 7 is 27. 
So that's uh, 1 to 27 is the chance. I actually have three cups, okay. So I flip the card, the random number is 7, so the shot is on target. So we have a chance for a goal here. So you flip another pack, pack and get a number, and we check that against the goalie card. Esposito's uh, range, save range is 23 to 85, so that's within his save range, so it's a save and a face-off. Okay. Whoops. Okay, oh, actually, uh, since that, that was a, um, uh, the, the, uh, the shooting range uh, was actually, it should have been plus one because of the team clutch uh, rating that we added there from that, from that pack. So it was actually uh, 27, it was actually 28 was the uh, successful, successful shot range. And since we've used one of those, I'm just going to change the die set that there's one, one team clutch rating still in effect. Okay, so we go to the face-off. It's uh, 73, so Chicago wins that face-off. Pitt Martin wins it, and it says uh, highest face-off usage control to right wing. So Chico Mackey has the puck. And roll for another fact. So past a left defense to the right wing, it gets an assist bonus to the left wing for a shot on goal A. So Bobby Hall is going to get a shot on goal A. His uh, range is 1 to 46. Plus Mackey's assist rating is 3, so that's 49. But we subtract 1 because uh, it's the uh, New York team clutch rating is in effect. So that's uh, 48. And then we, sub and then we add uh, the, defen the uh, defense rating of the defender. So we have Jim Nielsen on the right defense is minus 6. So that's 48. So that's 42 is a successful shot range. Okay, no, uh, it's 78. So it's outside uh, Hull's on, tar um, on target range, so um, there's no chance for a goal here in this initial shot. So that's an automatic rebound, so you just flip it back, and you look at the uh, the rebound section. Actually, sorry, I'm just going to uh, put that in there, just make this easier. Yeah, okay, the rebound section. And the rebound says offense, right, defense. So that's a shot on goal for Chicago, and... Um, and then uh, the, the rebound goes to Bill White on the defense, and I think, okay, I've only done nine cards, so one more card, and then we're going to be changing lines, so take that off. Okay, action, puck deflected into stands, face off, so there we go, so we've got ten cards, and we're going to be changing lines, so I'm just going to put the, uh, the tokens over here, on the side. Show up there. Line two is on the ice. Okay, let's flip it back. Okay, and um, so in this case, uh, Walkuchuk is face off as a plus one. Stan Mikita is also a plus one. So in that case, you look at um, the uh, usage rating. So uh, Kuchuk is a 24, Mikita is a 21. So that the advantage goes to um, uh, Kuchuk on the Rangers for this. And so the, the success range for the face-off one is 1 to 51. So, um, and so the uh, number is 98, so Makita wins the face-off, and this is highest face-off usage control to left defense. So Jerry Korab has the puck. Okay, pass to left wing, and to the right wing, he gets an assist bonus. So that's uh, Cliff Coral. This bonus off to the center for a shot on goal A. So Makita is going to shot on goal A. His A rating is 1 to 26. Coral's assist rating is 4, so that's 30. And then we subtract the defense uh, rating of the center. And Kachuk's is 0. So that's uh, just a plain 30 is the shot chance. Okay, 67. It's outside Makita's range, so that's a rebound. So we flip it back, look at the rebound section, and it says defense right wing. So Bill Fairbairn on the Rangers has the puck. Okay, next action. Puck to the center, assist bonus. So Kachuk's got the assist bonus, pass to left defense, drop to right defense for a shot on goal A. So Tim Horton's going to get a shot on goal A. His shot on goal A range is only 1 to 2. So this is uh, not likely to be... Uh, uh, in target shot, but uh, Kachuk's assist rating is 6, so that makes it 8. 
And uh, the player opposite the right defense is the uh, left wing. So Dennis Hall defense is minus one. So that's seven. So one to seven is the successful shot range here. 14. Okay, so it's, it's close, but uh, still not in range. So it's a rebound. It says defense, pest intimidation rating controls the puck. So I look at the intimidation ratings of the players on Chicago and Korab and Magnuson are both minus four. So I'll just randomly choose uh, Keith Magnuson uh, to control the rebound, have the puck. We go to the next back here. So puck to right defense and uh, left defense pass up ice to the center for a shot on goal B. So Makita's B rating is a one to eight. So in this case, um, we're just gonna uh, he's not going to elect to shoot the puck, and we're just going to continue on with the next action. Okay, now the next action says attentive pass, four-second chart. So, uh, we have to look at the four-second chart here, and I'm just going to roll two D10s, and then roll a two. And we look under the four-check two column. So it says a shot on goal A, plus uh, one D6 for the highest value. So player with the highest value on the ice is uh, either Hall, Makita, or Magnuson. So I'm going to assign it to Dennis Hall. <clears throat> so it's a shot on goal A, and then we're adding a roll of 1d6. And if we choose not to roll, it says a 3 here in brackets, so you can just automatically make it a 3. So um, let's just roll a d6, and we're going to roll add 5. So it's a shot on goal A for Hall, so 42 plus 5 is 47. And uh, the right defense is Tim Horton. His defense is minus five, so that's 42. Look at facts, 63, so it's outside his range, so that's a rebound. Rebound says defense, left defense. So Rod Sealing has the puck, and then we've done our 10 facts for that line, so we move. So now the third line has come on, yes. Um, so I'm not gonna play any, play any more here. I'll just show you maybe a couple other examples. Um, sometimes you get a thing where it says, um, oh, sorry, yeah, one, one thing I, I should uh, remember is uh, for a shot and goal B and C, the, the, the uh, calculation is a little bit different in that you, uh, instead of using the uh, defense rating of the uh, defender, you use the uh, intimidation rating. So, for instance, if Pitt Martin uh, was uh, doing a shot on goal B, his range is 1 to 7, John Martel's intimidation rating is plus 1, so it increases Pitt Martin's shot success rating to one to eight. So that's uh, uh, the only difference. Uh, same thing for shot on goal C. Uh, sometimes you get that thing where it says check for penalty. And uh, what you do is you look at uh, each, each team has a uh, team penalty rating. So you just look at those two. So you, and then you look at this uh, team, uh, this chart here, um, where it, uh, the home team penalty index, in this case, Chicago is a five. Visiting, pe visiting penalty index is a four. So you look here and uh, it says one to 31 is a penalty on the home team, 32 to 56 on the visitor, and 57 to 100 is no penalty. So what you just do is either flip a fact to get a new random number or you could roll the 2D10 and determine whether a penalty happens or not. So if you do get a penalty, uh, then there's another chart here uh, again, you would get another, another random number and they would tell you um, which player gets the, uh, the penalty, uh, what the penalty is, if it's a minor or major, and, tell, and then it tells you how many cards to use uh, for the, the duration of the penalty. Um, trying to think if there's other uh, um, actions that uh, you need. Oh yes, if, um, if you get a, one of these uh, uh, special cards here where you get the, the clutch ratings in effect. Um, see if I can find one here quickly. Yeah, yeah. You can get a, sometimes you can get a goalie clutch rating. And then you can get a goalie clutch rating. This is next two shots. So that means that the uh, the goalie's clutch rating would, would be added to the goalie's uh, save rating. So in, so for instance, if uh, if there was a shot on Tony Esposito and uh, the, it was within the shooter's range and you had to check to see if the goalie saved it or not, you would add his clutch rating one. So his save rating at home would go from 23 to 86. 
and in uh, if and in overtime uh, you automatically uh, add uh, the team clutch rating and the goalie clutch rating to the goalie save rating um, yeah I think, I think that was about it um, yeah so it's a uh, it's a um, it's a fairly, a fairly easy game to learn um, and I'm not um, it's in the, the uh, the shot calculation process has uh, been improved a lot. Uh, originally, uh, you had to check uh, ratings on several different players on the defense before uh, uh, calculating the different shot range. And now it's just the immediate uh, uh, defender um, is uh, their rating is included and not uh, the defense or intimidation rating of two or three players. So that, that simplifies things a lot. Um, He's also uh, clarified uh, th um, things on the facts, um, and he's clarified things in the rules as well. So there's been lots of improvements uh, to the game, and um, and the availability. Uh, I, I think, I think, as far as I know, it's the only hockey game that has uh, only all full play hockey game that has all NHL seasons available. Um, so that that's a big bonus, and he also has some great team sets, and he has a, I think he's coming out with a set of uh, Stanley Cup finalist sets uh, soon and uh, and then he's also got I think all-time franchise greats sets as well for the current franchises current franchises and maybe for ones that are no longer are uh, in existence so um, anyway um, I'm just starting to um, play play the game again and um, my interest has been renewed in it so uh, hopefully uh, yeah hopefully it's uh, if uh, this game looks like uh, it would suit you, uh, if, if I know some people don't like facts, and, and that, that's fine. Uh, but if you if you like a fact-driven game, then this is a it's a pretty smooth uh, gameplay. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're familiar with um, uh, the Big Bep hockey game, it's uh, you can see that it's, it's very similar. Uh, Big Bep is actually um, uh, modeled after the Status Pro uh, game, and then uh, um, the developer uh, uh, made some uh, changes and embellishments to that too. So, um, but uh, the the core the core engine of the game is pretty much the same. So, but, so if you're familiar with that, then you, you'll you'll have no problem picking this up. Yes, um, I plan to uh, once I uh, play more games and get more familiar with the pace and stuff like that. I plan to make a uh, I'm going to make a video of a full game, play through a full game uh, with, uh, and but not stop to explain everything and just sort of narrate out loud. So just to give you an idea of what the pace of play is when you're when you've got uh, the mechanics of the game down. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching, and um, see you later.